Let's talk about flipping over to the defensive side of the football, as I mentioned in the open. I'm going to talk some BYU defensive ends. Obviously, BYU fans want nothing more than for BYU to have an elite pass rush, to be able to get after opposing quarterbacks, harass them, get sacked, strip uh, the ball out, get fumbles, turn the ball over, get the ball back for the offense, do all the stuff that BYU's defense seemingly has not done for the better part of at least the last two seasons. BYU's defense under Elisa Tuiaki and Ed Lamb's leadership was far more passive than the new defense is going to be. They have promised, speaking of Jay Hill as BYU's defensive coordinator, that they will no longer suffer death by a thousand paper cuts. That is the term that he used about how he intends to go out and have his defense attack. Uh, he wants guys to get after the quarterback. He wants to unshackle, quote-unquote, the guys like Tyler Batty, who you're going to hear from here in a moment. But there's other guys in this defensive end unit who are absolutely going to benefit from this new defensive philosophy. Now, before we talk about some of the individual players, let me also add this tidbit. I believe that BYU's base alignment is going to be a forward down alignment, meaning there will be two defensive ends on the field at any given time. Are they going to be true out-and-out -out defensive ends? No, I don't think so. You're going to see them play more in the mold of having one who is a traditional hand-in-the-dirt defensive end. That's a guy like Tyler Batty, for example, who's got the size at 6'5", 270 pounds to be a true defensive end. I think the other end is going to be a hybrid player who's going to be more capable of, if they have to, put their hand in the dirt and play in a three-point stance, but also be able to rush the passer of a two-point stance and even drop into coverage in certain alignments to help BYU's defense. This is going to be a defense that is not going to sit idly by and drop into a drop-eight formation play after play after play, even as an opposing team might be carving them up. That is not Jay Hill's philosophy. He will adjust in-game to make sure that BYU has the best opportunity to, as he says, attack the opposing offense. So, expect to see that change in particular with BYU's defense. Is it going to be a wholesale change year one? I would hope so, because frankly, I'm not sure how much lower you could have sunk last year on BYU's defense. So, the hope is this year they can kind of just... Uh, wad up the ball of paper that was last season say you know what that's in the past toss it in the rubbish bin over there light it on fire and we're moving on to next year that's what BYU's philosophy I think it should be now with regards to players that I think are going to have a better opportunity this year for BYU defensive end I actually look at this position group and think it's quite deep if everybody lives up to their potential now that's obviously betting on guys being able to capitalize on what the God-given gifts that they have but I think the two names we need to mention first off uh, start with with Tyler Batty, as we've already mentioned, six foot five, two hundred and seventy-three pounds. I expect him to be a team captain this year for BYU, and you're going to hear from him one-on-one -on -one with myself here in just a moment. I had a great chance to catch up with him at Big 12 Media Days last week, but he has got all of the ability to be an elite pass rusher and a true defensive end in every sense of the word for BYU, if simply given the opportunity. The sad part is, is the past three seasons he's played for BYU to this point, he has been asked to do something that is kind of anti antithetical I'm using the right term uh, to what he is as a defensive end he's been asked to two gap, to hold up against the run, to not necessarily go one on one and get after the quarterback as often as he probably would have liked to have uh, been going after the quarterback but I expect him to have maybe his best season in a BYU uniform barring something unforeseen, meaning typically injury, which is something that really knocked him out early on in that 2020 season Season is he had a really, really good start to that 2020 campaign, as many of you might recall, coming off a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, then got nicked up due to injury and never got back to that form and has just simply not been at that same level in the uh, two years since. Now, I hope that this year will be a different story for him. I think opposite him at that uh, hybrid defensive end role where you see a guy standing up is going to be a guy like Isaiah Banyan. Of course, the transfer in from Boise State, a native of Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada, he is six foot four, two 235 pounds. Yes, that seems very skinny and light for a defensive end, but in this alignment that BYU is going to utilize, he will use that lightning quick ability, that first step he has developed during his time at Boise State and obviously coming out of the prep ranks up there in Canada to get after the opposing quarterback. This is a guy not that long ago was Boise State's leading sack artist in a season. He has got the ability to get after the quarterback, and BYU wants to see that in spades this year from a guy like Isaiah Banya. The nice part is 
both of these players, I think, will be the headliners, probably the day one starters for BYU at these positions. But I think that they have plenty of bodies behind them who are capable of stepping up should injury or obviously the need to get a blow for these guys, get them some rest on the sideline, calls for it. I think uh, looking mainly at Tyler Batty's position, essentially that def- the strong side defensive end, they used to call it the SDE, uh, the strong defensive end. I think you can see a guy like Blake Mangelson really take an uptick in his ability this year. Six foot five, 260 pounds, almost a carbon copy of what Tyler Batty is, albeit just a little bit lighter. He is a junior as well, coming in from Juab High School, has been a walk-on with the BYU football program, has had his moments uh, in BYU's defense, and has been a key part of the rotation for BYU, but the hope is he'll be able to take on a bigger role this year for BYU, and if not, I think the other b- name to keep an eye on, or excuse me, two names to keep an eye on, include New Letau Selison, who is a transfer from uh, Weber State. We've talked about him a little bit. Six foot one, 247 pounds. Throughout spring camp, he was an absolute terror with the second and third string units, absolutely making plays in the backfield, tackles for loss and the like. Will that translate over to playing first string uh, type reps against BYU and opposing teams' best lineups? Only time will tell, but he's going to have his opportunity to show what he's capable of during training camp. Another transfer from Weber State also joins him in Logan Latui, a former walk-on himself from Weber State. He is six foot one, 255 pounds, and actually had a pretty good start to last season for BYU on defense. Actually got the start, if you recall, I believe against Oregon. Might have been his uh, first career start, if I recall correctly, for the BYU football program. At six foot one, 255 pounds, he and Acelosin lack the ideal height you want for your defensive ends. That's more of what Mangelson and Batty have at six five, but both of them are wide bodies who are capable of making plays in the backfield. That's the hope that those four guys can hold down that quote-unquote strong side of BYU's defensive end alignment. Now, opposite of that, I look at five bodies competing for playing time, two of which I think I'm very, well, I'm not thinking, I'm very excited to finally see in a BYU uniform. I already mentioned Isaiah Banya. I think he is the day one starter just simply due to the fact he has proven himself at the FBS level already. Now, the other names to keep an eye on include Bodie Schoonover. Now, Schoonover was a guy that was a little bit of a tweener coming out of high school at American Fork. We all kind of wondered, is he going to play defensive end or will he uh, play linebacker for BYU? Well, as it stands, he's listed at defensive end at six foot four, 245 pounds. And I have to say, I have seen my fair share of return missionaries coming into the BYU football program. Not many of them looked as cut and as in shape as a guy like Bodie Schoonover did the second he enrolled at BYU last year. He spent the entirety of last season kind of working his way up the depth chart, learning the ins and outs and intricacies of BYU's defense and saw some spot uh, game action for BYU, but the hope is this year he can go out and prove himself because, like I said, he has got just this this chiseled frame. You look at a guy like Bodie Schoonover, he gets off the school bus and you're like, okay, that's a dude. That's a dude you want to see out there on the football field, and the hope is that he can live up to that, to, to, to that ability. The other name behind Isaiah Banya, who I think we're waiting to finally break out, is Isaiah Moa. Now, uh, Moa is a defensive end at six foot three, two 245 pounds, former four-star prospect coming into BYU by way of Weber High School. The, the hope is that you finally will realize his potential because he has – it in spades. He has got every single gift you could possibly want for a defensive end. It's all really up at this point to Isaiah for putting it all together and then going out there and showing what he's capable of. At minimum, I think that BYU has a very nice top three at defensive end, and I have not even brought up the two other brothers that are playing at this position who I think could make a factor this year. Those would be the Daly brothers. Michael Daly, a six foot three, two 235 pound defensive end, uh, obviously from Lone Peak High School, now a sophomore with the BYU football program. And then, of course, the guy that BYU fans have been hoping to see for years now, John Henry Daly, obviously also out of Lone Peak High School, recently returned from a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He is the tallest of these guys we're calling the hybrid defensive end role. At six foot five, 225 pounds. The only problem I have with John Henry returning so recently from a mission and obviously training camp starting in le- uh, less than two weeks' time is he will he really be able to go day one in training camp? I highly, highly doubt that. I think he is very much a redshirt candidate this year for BYU. And then come the tail end of the season, when maybe he's starting to get himself back into shape a little bit, you throw him into some of these games. He has the four games he can use as a redshirt. And then he goes out and shows he's capable of building towards 
hopefully a bigger role in 2024 and beyond for the BYU football program. So looking at it with regards to the defensive ends, I think you have two headliners. And this is kind of the question I have about this unit is I think you have got two very established guys, speaking of Tyler Batty and Isaiah Banya, who I think against Sam Houston State are going to be your day one guys for the BYU football program. The question is behind that, how much quality depth actually is there? It's based on potential. I think it's all there. I think there's lots of bodies who could play big roles for BYU in this defense. The question will be, can they realize that potential? I, I talked about that with Isaiah Moa. It's the same thing for a guy like Bodie Schoonover. As I said, Bodie Schoonover looks every bit the part of an elite pass rush defensive end type. The question is, can he realize what he's capable of and go out and put it together during training camp? That's the biggest thing. Is you, uh, the defensive ends for BYU, you want nothing more as a Cougar fan. And trust me, I hear it from you guys. I've heard it from you guys for the past three or four years in particular, you want to see an improved pass rush. We've heard from the coaches, well, ph philosophically, we're, we're more about controlling uh, the ball, keeping it in front of us, and obviously waiting for the opposing team to make a mistake. That's not the philosophy with Jay Hill. Jay Hill is going to require these defensive ends to hone their craft as pass rushers, create havoc in the pocket, and get after the opposing quarterback. Make plays in the backfield, tackle that uh, running back when that ball's handed off. He wants nothing more than for his front four, and that includes the defensive tackle tackles that we will highlight here in, in another a few days. He wants those guys to go out and prove themselves every single day out there on the football field, and he will require it of them. If they hope to play this year, speaking of any of these bodies, whether it's John Henry Daly, uh, uh, Tyler Batty, uh, Blake Mangelson, anybody I have mentioned previously on these defensive ends, you have to prove it every day in practice because Jay Hill, the one thing I know about Jay is he requires discipline but also fanatical effort. I know it's a Bronco Mendenhall term, but he absolutely requires it of his defensive players. He showed it during his time at Utah, he showed it uh, for the next past nine years at Weber State, putting together some of the best FCS defenses we have seen in quite some time. He wants nothing more than for these defensive ends to live up to the hype and the potential and become the forces off the edge that BYU fans want them to be. The question ultimately will will lie with these players. And if the guys behind, I think what I said, Isaiah Banyan and Tyler Batty, can the other body step up and create a formidable unit for BYU at defensive end? Or will they have to go back to the drawing board and maybe hit the transfer portal to find bodies that truly can get after the quarterback uh, in 2024 and beyond? It's a big question, obviously one that's going to be answered hopefully early on in training camp and obviously early on in the season. But unfortunately, the, the answers really don't come until you see these guys actually getting after it in full pads, going up against, in the case of training camp, against their own teammates, and then against Sam Houston State, Southern Utah, and on down the line, getting you re getting in to the 2023 football season. But the, the simple hope is that BYU can have an improved pass rush, because if they don't, we've all seen the results of the past two seasons in particular, and they were not pretty, and BYU needs a far, far better pass rush than they have absolutely, they've endured, I guess is the easiest way to say it, over the past couple of years.